Hello friends, you are looking at the service for the second Sunday after Epiphany, January 17th, 2021. Coming to you on behalf of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Ironwood, Michigan, I'm Pastor Doug Norquist. I'm here as usual with my off-camera bride, Shirley. Hi everybody! You heard her, and we are glad that she's here, and we are glad that you are with us. I think we're going to get right into the service today. I invite you, if you have a hymnal, to turn to hymn number 668, 668, it's O Zion Haste. <laughs> Zion haste, your mission I fulfill, to tell to all the world that God is light, that he who made all nations is not willing, one soul should bear Lost in sheets of night, published glad tidings, tidings of peace, tidings of Jesus, redemption and release. Every people, tongue, and nation, that God in whom they live and move is love. Tell how he stood to save his lost creation and died on earth. That might live upon, publish glad tidings, tidings of peace, tidings of Jesus, redemption and release. He comes again, O Zion, there you be. Make known to every heart His saving grace. Let none to ye as ransom fail to be through your neglect, unfit to see His face. Publish glad tidings, tidings of peace, tidings of Jesus, redemption and release. We continue with our order for confession and forgiveness. You'll find this in the front part on page 211. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. 
turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace that you have been saved, and it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I declare your sins forgiven as you come to him repentant. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your heart through faith. Amen. Amen. We keep going with our service order. When we get to the Kyrie part, the words Kyrie eleison that I sing are just the words that uh, you will sing, sing back if you have the hymnal, Lord have mercy. I often suggest that we use this as a time to cry out to God to mercy for a particular situation. Today I want to ask you to join me in praying for mercy for our nation. As uh, we're living in eventful times and we have an inauguration coming and we could use mercy and blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord have mercy, priest heaven's on, Christ have mercy, Kyrie heaven's on, Lord have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Save our home. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. 
May we know more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to have a special time now with the children. Young people, gather around. We're glad you're with us. Thanks for listening. Glad that you're part of us, that you're one of us. And thankful that I get a chance to talk to you today. I have here one thing. I have a telephone. This is actually our landline. It's not going to ring because we always unplug it before the service starts when we are recording services. But it makes a good prop for me today. I also have a cell phone, which isn't quite as safe for me to have here because I didn't turn this off. So if it rings, it will disturb our service and we'll just have to put up with it. We, when we see a telephone, the thing you think of is that you might use it to call somebody or somebody might use it to call you. Now on cell phones like this, you can do all sorts of other things, fancy things that when I was your age, we thought were just science fiction just about sometime in the future that might happen that you can actually like see a picture on your telephone and talk to somebody and see them and stuff like that and now we have them and the main thing though is you get a call on the telephone and you say hello today we have some readings that talk about calls of a different sort not from the telephone they hadn't invented telephones yet but a call from god one of them was a a boy named Samuel. I don't know exactly how old he was, but he was still uh, described as a lad, a young boy. And he was uh, serving as a, uh, just a gopher. He did whatever needed to be done in the tabernacle, which was like their house of worship at that time. It was actually a big fancy tent. And while he was there, God spoke to him. God called him and said, Samuel, and he didn't even recognize that it was God. You know, normally uh, when God speaks to us, I believe that God does, but usually it's not with an audible voice, like you'd hear somebody talk to you who's get over on the other side of the room. Usually it's more subtle than that. Something in our spirit senses that God might be saying something, maybe our conscience. Or God speaks to us, of course, through the word of God. And we can hear God that way. But Samuel was hearing God in a, a different way, maybe than most of us experience, and uh, even that most people in his day experienced. And he didn't recognize it right away. But his boss, who was a priest, finally caught on. Actually, it took three times, because he kept going to Eli. He thought it was Eli, his boss, that was calling him. He said, here I am, you called me. And he said, no, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And the third time around, Eli said, oh, you know what? I bet this is God trying to talk to you. So the next time, just say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And so that's what Samuel did. And God started talking to him. And it wasn't a very easy assignment, too, because the very first thing God was supposed to do is deliver a message to Eli, saying that Eli's family was in trouble because they had been turning their back on God. So it wasn't easy, but Eli, to his credit, received the word and and didn't, you know, like get mad at Samuel because you don't, you don't attack the messenger for bringing the message, right? And Samuel then became a great prophet for the rest of his life. He lived to be an old man and was a very important figure in the life of the nation of Israel. Now, God comes to us with a call to lots of calls, really. And I'm going to be talking about that today. It's usually not like with Samuel that you hear an audible voice and God says, this is what I want you to do. The most important call is the one that I want to talk to you about. And that is the call that comes to you because of baptism. And now there might be somebody listening today who hasn't been baptized. And so if that's you, what I have to say to you is, I want you to consider this service and this sermon, these things that I'm saying as God's call in your life to come Put your trust in him through Christ and believe in him. And then the first chance you get, you should find a chance to be baptized uh, in the context of a Christian congregation and become part of them. If you're around here, we'd love it if you'd come to me. 
and come to our congregation and be part of us. But most of the people listening right now are people that have been baptized. And in your baptism, God has given you a call, whether you know it or not, whether you've responded or not. And the call is this, I want you to be my child. I want you to believe in me, to trust in me. I want you to believe God is saying that when I sent my son Jesus into the world, I sent him to be your savior. And I want you to believe that I want to be with you so much that I'm inviting you to spend all of eternity with me in heaven. I'll bring you there. I'll raise you up again and bring you there, God says, after you die. You're not going to get a more important call than that. And the way that you know that the call has come to you and it's at work in your life is when you put your trust in Jesus. When you are, are living, you say, okay, God, I, I want to receive what you're giving and I want to live for you. And you're trying to be then a follower of Jesus. When that happens, something really supernatural has happened because God has brought you to faith. And God wants our lives to be lives of faith. And that is what our baptism was about. For those of us who have been baptized, most of us were baptized before we could even remember. But we don't, that doesn't have to matter because God remembers. And the most important thing about it is that God who calls us can be trusted. He's faithful. And so he wants us to live our lives for him as if that were true. Now there will be other ways in which a call is might be on our life too. There might be a particular thing that God wants you or me to do with our life. And that's a little, um, that's a little trickier. That's something that we should test out with people that we trust in the church and with our family. Things like, you know, what am, what am I gonna be when I grow up? What is my job gonna be? When I was your age, I didn't know I was gonna be a pastor and God, spoke to me about that and brought me into being a pastor. But it, it's not always to be a pastor. You can serve God by being a teacher or a forester or a doctor or a nurse or a CNA. That's, that's the sort of like a nurse, but not quite as much education or um, all sorts of different things. I think I've met people that are called by God to, to drive machinery or to fix septic tanks, whatever it might be. God, God calls us to do things that will, that will serve people, that will bring blessing into the world. And I'm gonna be talking about that in my sermon too, and I hope you'll be listening. But the most important thing is to remember, even if you got all of that wrong, if you know that God loves you and you respond in faith and love and if you are asking God to help you to be good at loving other people, you really can't go too far wrong. And that's the most important call for you to hear. Anything else, not so much at the center. And so I'm gonna be praying that God will help us all to follow according to the, God, the call of God on our life, particularly as it comes in the call of baptism, the call to faith the call to putting our trust in Jesus. So would you join me in prayer? Let's pray. So help us all. If there's anybody here who, this is news to them, that they ought to put their trust in you, I pray that you would help them to do that. And for those of us that have been living that life, maybe for years or decades, help us to keep turning to you in love and trust. So that, so that we can receive your grace and live for you and answer your call to be your people in the world. We pray it in Jesus' name, for he makes it possible. Amen. Thank you again, young people. So glad that you are listening. Our first reading today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, 
was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went out to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do a thing in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Israel that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do to you more, as so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then Eli said, It is the Lord. Let him do as seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 139. If you're working from the hymns, the, the psalms and the hymnal, this will be verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 18. If you have the celebrate insert, it will be printed right there for you. You can sing along or you can sing responsively. Lord, you have searched me out. Oh, Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you, while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. 
Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. Moon days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body for, with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Alleluia, you have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 1. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets wrote, Jesus the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Help us to hear your call upon our life, the calling of our baptism, and whatever other callings should be upon us or are upon us. Help us most of all to know your grace and your love. 
For we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. First of all, if you're the sort that reads the meditation that we send and have noticed that I say usually the same thing about in a sermon for this recording, I'm not doing it that way today. I just felt when I was going through it today that the Spirit was leading me to lay it aside and wing it. So that's what we're about today. And may God add blessing to what I have to share today. We have texts today that each deal in one way or another with calling from God, two of them quite specifically, quite particularly because they're about stories of people being called by God. I was talking to the children about Samuel and him hearing the voice of God. And we have this story that I just read about Jesus and Nathaniel and Philip. Now, before that, there was Peter and Andrew, and I believe it's John, he's not named. And they're having these encounters with Jesus. And on the surface of it, it might have been getting acquainted sort of things, almost like casual encounters. And yet, and yet Philip is already saying, this is the Messiah. They're having encounters with Jesus and they add up to a call upon their life. Samuel was called to be a prophet and these men were called to be disciples and apostles of Christ. But there's, there are calls that come upon the lives of believers that are as important really even as those calls. It's not just about apostles or prophets or for that matter pastors, but all people really have callings upon their life. I wanna talk about that some today. The most important call, as I was talking about to the young people, is the call that's wrapped up in our baptism, the call to faith, the call to trusting in God, the call to loving God, the call, it's also a call to discipleship, to following after Jesus and learning from him. If we have that call, anything else is not as as significant for what happens. My grandfather was somebody that thought at one point in his life that perhaps Jesus was calling him to be a pastor. He never did it. There was a need in his family. He quit school when he was in eighth grade, after eighth grade, and he, um, he got married and he had his career and for the rest of his life, he wondered if he had failed God. The rest of us knew he hadn't. The rest of us knew that, that I mean, there was one woman that said that she, uh, she used, that, that the one thing that brought her to church is she knew that Ed Larson was gonna greet her in the way that he did. And so he lived a life of discipleship and maybe or maybe not, he was wrong about that call from Jesus to be a pastor. I'd count it as a privilege if it was a call that he didn't answer, that now I get to wear that mantle. But the most important thing is he answered the call to love Jesus that was wrapped up in his baptism. Everything else, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying it's not as important. And if you, if you get that right, and let's say you get a lot of the other things wrong, like what your vocation should, what your your job should be, where you should live, things like that. A lot of those things might be things that God is just saying, well, what do you want to do? But let's say that God had a plan and you missed it. Well, God's big plan for you is that you love God, that you respond to God in faith. That's the thing that matters most, the call of your baptism. If anybody's listening, as I was saying to the children who hasn't been baptized, consider this your call. You're called to put your trust in him. And if you have been baptized, consider that, but also consider this to be your call, your call to put your trust in him. Now, there are other kinds of callings that come upon the lives of Christians then. Let me tell you about some of mine. I've already talked about being baptized and there came the call to faith somewhere along the line so early in my life that I don't even remember it. I heard the voice of God, not in my ears like Samuel apparently did, but deep in here somewhere. Deep in here somewhere, I knew that Jesus loved me and wanted me to love him back. And that became 
a call on my life, a much more important call on my life than anything else that's come after it. I was also at that time in my life a son. I had a mother and a father. I was blessed to have both and I was blessed to have good parents. Not perfect parents, but good parents. I appreciated them then, I appreciate them now. My father is still with us, he's 92. And I have a calling to honor them by virtue of being a son. Now for some people that's a tough calling because you know, you wouldn't want me to use the language that, that you might be tempted to uh, hear in a sermon, that you might be tempted to use about your father or your mother. Maybe they weren't such great people. They brought you into the world though, and they raised you. But in any case, you can honor them out of obedience to God. It doesn't mean you, that you agree with everything they did or that you like everything that they did. It's a calling that we have. If you are a mother, if you are a father, that's a calling from God. It's a high calling from God. It's a great calling from God. You won't get a greater calling. If you are a husband or a wife, that's a calling from God. I had the calling on my life to be married to Shirley before I had any idea that I would be a pastor. And even after I became a pastor, it's, the prim it's a more primary calling for me. I haven't always lived that out the way I should. The same with being a father, which is another calling that you can have. If you're a parent, what a calling. So I, it's, the primary thing is the call of our baptism to, to love God and to trust in Jesus. And then we have these other callings that have to do with our relationships. They're more important even than what people call maybe the locational or vocational things. The job that you do, the place that you live. That might matter, might not matter quite so much. What, what will matter more to God when you get to the end of your life and what I think will matter more to you is, how did you love? Did you love as God calls us to love? So in my own life, what was I called to do? I had People ask, what are you going to be when you grow up? There was a time when I said doctor because that's what my dad was. And because I said, it shows how much I knew, it looks easy. And then I, I began to see that, you know, that's not what my passion was about. But I still wondered, you know, would I be an ornithologist? Well, I sort of am, you know, because I still love birds. I loved them when I was eight. I love them now. I, would I be a musician? Well, I am, but it's not my living. And ministry kind of came into mind. I, I sensed it might be some kind of full-time work with the church. I didn't really suppose necessarily that I would be a pastor. And I just sought from day to day to be faithful in my dealings. You know, for a long time there, I was a student. I didn't really need to know anything else. My calling was to go to school, to do my best to learn, to do my best to be respectful to my teachers, and to show love to my classmates. That was enough. I didn't really need to know more. I did dither about it a little bit, but I didn't really need to. So I went on to college. There was a, you know, a, I tried to seek God's guidance about that too, but I wasn't sure. I got a good education there at St. Olaf. I learned a lot about st about subject matter. I learned a lot about music. And it was a good experience. And I came to my senior year. I had, was getting a music education degree, and I had a choice to make. A friend of mine came and said, you know, we'd like you, we'd wonder if you'd be willing to try to start a music program in our little Christian school. I knew that I wasn't gonna get paid very well for that. I knew that it was gonna be, there would be a lot of challenges involved, that it could be really rough in some ways. And I was right, it turned out, you know, some of the things were pretty challenging. Or I could seek a job in a public school as a teacher. I make, I'm sure I would eventually get one and make a lot better money. When I prayed about this, and by this time, Shirley and I knew that we were gonna be getting married. And so we were praying together and we sensed that God was just saying, 
What would you like to do? Either choice is okay with me. And I took the choice of taking this Christian school thing because I thought it would probably require more faith of me. And but it looked difficult and I liked the idea of the challenge. And I'm glad I did that. A few years into it, three years into it about, I was wondering, well, what do I do now? There was some question about whether we should stay in the apartment we were living in. It was getting a little small for us. There was some question about the job that I was doing. Is this really the thing? Some of the uh, my elders, my parents and others were saying, maybe you should consider something that would pay better. I was considering all of that. And I had made up my mind, you know what? I'm for, for maybe forever, I'm just gonna stay where I am. I had made up my mind and I was content with it. And I believed that God was content with it. And one day, when I was thinking really about something else, God, the Holy Spirit, interrupted my thoughts with this thing. It didn't come to my ears. Just somewhere inside, I knew it was God speaking, saying, the time has come to apply to seminary. So what do you do with that? I mean, even when you think that God is speaking, it's wise, especially, I guess, to, to check that out with fellow believers and, and get counsel, get advice. I did that. And all the lights were green. I still didn't even really know where to go to school. I didn't know what denomination I would be in. I didn't know I would be a Lutheran. I didn't know even that I would be a pastor because some people go to seminary and end up doing something else like church music or something. But it, it, it gradually became to be clear that, well, this matches my gifts. And there was something in my heart that said, you know, it would be really cool not just to be a pastor, but to be a pastor in, in churches and small towns for my whole life. And so far, that's been what it is. Ironwood is by far the biggest town I have served in as a pastor. Now, this sort of thing can work in a calling to other things too. And it, uh, because you can have just as much a call of God in your life to be a forester or a nurse or a doctor or a teacher or a farmer and or in all sorts of other things and sometimes the call is and I have a family and I need to provide for my family and this is a job I can do sometimes you can take the advice I'm not going to get this exactly the exact same words but the novelist Frederick Buechner said it this way when you find the place where your deep joy intersects with the world's great need you probably have a place for God's call on your life. And so that can mean a lot of things. There's a need for people to make beautiful art and music. There's a need for people to, to take young lives under their wing and teach them. There's a need for people to take care of natural resources. There's lots of different needs there. And if you have a peace in your heart about pursuing that, that may very well be your calling in life. You can serve God in a lot of different ways. You can hear from God in a lot of different ways, and it's usually not with the sort of audible voice that Samuel seems to have heard. It might be circumstances that really seems to be mostly what happens with Nathaniel and Jesus. They encounter each other, and out of that, God works Nathaniel's destiny. A lot of times you look back on it and you say, that must have been God that was at work. But again, I want to tell you, let's say, it's not likely to happen, but let's say that you are living as faithfully as you can, doing the best you can. You really love or loving and serving God, but you really screw up in terms of your vocation or your location. You know what? God's got that covered. It's not likely to happen for one thing, but if it does, God's got it covered with grace and with love. And we'll be looking especially at this. Did that person live as someone that loves me and trusts me? If God can say that that's what you were, not me, Doug Norquist, didn't me, God, talking to us, then God will be pleased. Anyway, it all rests on grace anyway. It all rests on God's outpouring of love in grace. So let us rejoice in that. And let us each day seek to live out 
our callings. Let's pray. So help us faithfully to live out these things and faithfully to follow you. I pray that each person listening would hear your call to trust in you and to love you. And I pray that each person listening, whether they're old or young, would be seeking to pursue your will. Amen. Our hymn is number 798. Such as this unseen, and admit to what I need in you, and you in me. Will you love the you I in my uncall your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? To me, shape the world around. Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your sound and sound goes true when you but call my name. Will you turn and follow you and never be? Say, in company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show, thus you move and live and grow in you, and you in me. Let us declare and confess our faith together now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you're using the hymnal and if you need this, it's on page 217. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. I'll be following mostly the order in the Celebrate insert and going immediately from there to the prayers of thanksgiving in the Service of the Word, page 220. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, 
Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, or not so much gathered oftentimes now because of the pandemic, but belonging to one another in Christ. And for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God, for the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God, for police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments that they provide protection to all people. And indeed, especially that there might be protection and peace at a nation's capital and throughout the nation, and particularly on Inauguration Day. We pray again for peaceful transfer of power and for smooth transitions. We pray that all leaders and all public servants will be working for the protection of all people and especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, yes. O God, for those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, those who are imprisoned or homebound, those wondering whether where their next rent will come from or their next bag of groceries, those wondering what they're going to do with the feeling of isolation, whatever the challenges or struggles may be, that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our neighborhoods, for visitors joining us, um, maybe this service for the first time or returning, for those who are absent, maybe not able to come online, for all of us that are longing to be together again in worship, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. Have, have mercy, mercy, O God. And thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have, have mercy, mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is This Little Light. It's number 677 if you want to work on that or read it from the hymnal. Although lots of people have learned this just around a campfire or something. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna.
gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light. Just the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Just the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Go in peace, let your light shine for Christ. Thanks be to God.